So we're going to jump right in. So Chuck, tell us, where were you born? What year? And we want to know a bit about your background, your family. What, 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 I, was, what was I was born on? in 1953 in East Texas. Uh, I grew up in East Texas along the border between East Texas and Louisiana. Uh, and we own quite a bit of land all through that area growing up. Matter of fact, Wesley, uh, the land that we own, my dad acquired the inheritance of all the 12 brothers and sisters of the Pierce tribe. And that land was called Rehoboth. Many of you have heard uh, that word in the word of God. It's the place where uh, uh, Isaac kept going past all the wells and he finally dug a well in Rehoboth. And we, that was what our land was called, Rehoboth, all through that area there. So Between your father was one of Texas 12 to, siblings? Uh, my my father was his his family. He had only one brother, but his whole family, the Pierce line, once they settled there, it was 12 brothers and sisters. So they all had their tracts of land that had been acquired through the years uh, of his grandfather and father. And my dad acquired the entire inheritance through hard work and uh made sure that that inheritance was secured. He was a very prosperous man at times. And then our inheritance fell into disarray uh, because of various decisions that were made. And that's how I came to know the Lord. I, I have a godly inheritance and an evil inheritance. I think many of you will relate to that. And I chose the godly inheritance. My, wow. my, I have a very godly, I had a very godly grandmother on my mother's side. And my mother's family was from Luxem Luxembourg and they married into uh, the native uh, first people, the Chickasaw people. So my great grandmother was full blood Chickasaw. My grandmother was half Chickasaw. And our, so our family has always had native American uh, European descent, and uh, my grandmother was a very godly woman, and uh, I thank God for godly grandmothers. What, would you say she was a prophetic woman? Yes. Uh, in the Native culture, the prophetic people usually have white hair. Now, I know you're looking at me, and I've always been involved with our first people here in America. Uh, the prophetic people, the air keepers, their hair would usually turn white. And uh, they were very prophetic. My grandmother was very prophetic. My mother was a businesswoman, but also very prophetic. And my great grandmother was very prophetic. Wow. So you come from four generations of basically prophetic prophets. Well, and where, and, and you know, I think as kids, we don't realize our inheritance. We have to make choices over our inheritance. And I started making choices. And I, I would go with my grandmother. My grandfather's family were uh, on my mother's side were Pentecostal people. But my grandmother went to a Baptist church, mainly because she, as she would always say, you know, don't ever let anyone tell you that the them speaking in tongues in real or any of that don't do that because it is real i have just chosen to go to the baptist church because i don't want to i don't believe in all the legalistic look that is there mm -hmm. and so i grew up knowing about the spirit of god also and which was real key but then you have to understand i had had one side of my family that had an evil gleaning also so it was always this war, but I would go with my grandmother to this Baptist church, and there was a little old lady there, and she would stand up, and she would, uh, in the Baptist church, she would start waving her hands, and she and the pastor would stop and say, now this was a Baptist church, he would say, Miss Grimes, what's happening? She said, the Lord is speaking to me. Well, that would just fascinate me. <laughs> that all the Bible stories, that that same God in these Bible stories could be speaking. Mm. And I, so I told my grandmother one time, I said, I want the Lord to speak to me. And she said, if you would just sit down and shut up, the Lord <laughs> could speak to you. you. You just move around all the time. And 
if something happened with me and people would go forward, you know, in the Baptist church, Wesley, you come from there, they would go forward every Sunday. They would give an altar call and yeah. someone would go forward and, and they would say the Lord had spoken to them. Wow. And I, I said, well, I will, I've got to wait for the Lord to speak to me. So on September the 11th, uh, 1963, the Lord spoke to me. It was like he came and stood on that second row where I sat by my grandmother. And how and old he, were you at that time? Uh, I was, I was uh, 11. And I was little uh, 10 going on 11. And he came forward and he said, this is your day. Wow. And I went forward and I got saved. Now, that was amazing. I got, I really met the Lord at that time. So uh, that, you, you, there was no you were question. a believer. You were surrounded by people Absolutely. that loved God. <clears throat> there were some evil influences. Well, it was half and half. And because our family had a lot of, our family was in great crisis. Our family looks like this nation that we're in now. I mean, it was in great crisis. Uh, divided. Uh, divided with my dad. My dad was very, uh, he prospered in a lot of areas, but he fell into corruption and, and drinking and various things like that. My mother, as I said, was a businesswoman. They, they had a lot going for him. And yet uh, the Lord was in the family. Mm -hmm. And the Lord was in me. And so through the years. Uh, so at 11, uh, what did he say to you at that time? What did he say? He said, time? this is your day. And so I went forward, I knelt down and I invited him to come into my heart. Now, that's what I want to say to you. He's the father of our spirits. That's what uh, that's what you might have uh, a inheritance with a mother and a father. But he's the father of our spirit. So some way it says that in Hebrew, our spirit has to come back and align itself with him. That's what salvation is about. Then salvation begins to work through our whole being mm -hmm. and our destiny and our timeline. So salvation began to work in me. So if, I someone, was, if someone's listening to this, how would you describe that you heard him say that? How, how did that happen? It was as if he was standing right next to me himself on that row. I was sitting on the outside of that second pew, and my grandmother always sat next to me. And he said, this is your day. I, it was just a clear voice that I heard. Wow. And I just got up and went forward with it. So what would you Down say right now? What would you say to someone who even has heard that before and didn't act on it? What do they do now? I think you're going to have to learn in your life to learn how to submit to uh, something that's greater than you and know that you'll know when it's beyond your own mind. Uh, you'll right. know that it's just not some thought that you want. Mm. God has put desire in you, but you're going to know when he's activating that desire by his spirit. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, that desire to know him came alive in me.